Recipes for Technical Trading Success in Cook's Kitchen. How big a bite will the coronavirus take out of the stock market? Let's dive in, we'll talk about the virus, we'll talk about the market, and some other cool stuff in Cook's books. All right, let's take a look at the uh, Triple Q chart first. You know, I've been talking for weeks that the QQQ was overbought, um, and I was looking to get short when it got over 7% above its 50-day moving average, which is exactly what was happening. Uh, you see these couple of days last week. This was 7.3% uh, above its 50-day, uh, and I already started a short position there, um, and then we had the big reversal. Now everybody wants to talk about how this is, uh, this is the coronavirus, um, you know, causing the, the hiccup in the market, but, you know, the market was in search, it was an overbought market in search of a catalyst, a negative catalyst, and we finally got one. Uh, it hasn't taken too much off the market. Um, you know, we're in the middle of earnings seasons here. A Apple was great. Uh, but I think this is a bounce right now, and, and we will test lower because there were too many latecomers to this rally. There was too much FOMO, too many fund managers chasing. So, uh, the coronavirus headlines will, you know, buffet the market back and forth. So let's talk about the coronavirus. First thing, you know, I'm no expert. Um, you know, you look at my screen here. You want to go to the CDC to get the latest. You can find out historical facts. You know, uh, SARS and MERS were coronaviruses, are coronaviruses. Um, they are more lethal versions. There's about seven. And the new one is called 2019-N. COB for coronavirus. Uh, but CDC has uh, this page here, has a lot of good resources and references, uh, different human types. Um, you know, keep in mind it's a, it's a virus found primarily, well, it's, it originates in mammals and birds, um, can, you know, infect livestock without wiping out a population. And uh, for us, I mean, the virus mutates and then can be transmitted to a human uh, and use human cells as a host, and then obviously it can spread. So let's talk about the spreading real quick. So, um, you know, as of uh, this morning, the number of cases in China has exceeded the level of SARS from 2003, which was about 5,500. Here we're approaching 6,000, could be more. Um, and uh, the number of deaths is over 130. Uh, I think for SARS it was 800. But we're in this sort of geometric expansion phase of the spreading. Um, and based on the current rate, where we've gone from zero to 6,000, which is over 50% a day, you know, it's you know, one person can spread it to, to two or three people. Um, there are projections about how fast this could spread and whether it could become a global pandemic. Let's look at some data here. Uh, I'm going to go on Twitter. Jim Bianco of uh, Bianco Research here in Chicago has just played with the math a little bit. Using official numbers from China, uh, he created this chart here. Hopefully you can see this good uh, in, the, in the resolution. So this is coronavirus infections progression through February 20th. So uh, he's got reported infections in blue which as of the 26th were up to uh, 4,500. And then the gold is the model progression based on you know, this growth rate. Infection growth is following a geometric progression of 53% a day, which you know, is basically every infected person could infect two to two and a half people. So by, um, by February, Third, you could be into 88,000 infections, just below 100,000. And then at this rate, you know, things evolve rapidly. You're talking by February 6th, you're over 300,000. And if the rate continued, you know, theoretically, um, this geometric model progression would indicate you could break uh, 100 million sometime in late February. Um, okay, so. That's just a math model. It's not what's going to happen. It's nobody's prediction. It's not Jim Bianco's prediction. It's just taking the current rate of change and um, uh, extrapolating it out. 
but this is how pandemics get going. I just did a podcast yesterday, uh, and the article will publish today, where I took a look at the last huge pandemic, which was the Spanish flu during World War I, which killed as many as 50 million people and infected 500 million across the globe. Uh, interesting thing is that uh, they don't, it's called the Spanish flu, but for a completely odd and um, suspect reason. During World War I, the, neither the Allied powers nor any powers in Europe wanted to talk or publish data about illness or deaths from the flu because they didn't want it to affect their war effort. And so the only country reporting data on infections and deaths was Spain. So they got the, the title for the Spanish flu. Um, they're not exactly sure where it started. Could have come, could have actually come from Asia. Um, there was a camp, a uh, military base in Kansas that had uh, 40 deaths. So they're, you know, they're wondering how that's connected. But we may never know how the Spanish flu started. Uh, but it's good to look. That, I mean, that's a, that was a pandemic by the way it spread and the number of people it killed. So could coronavirus turn into that? It's certainly possible. I think one thing that since we survived SARS and Ebola and Zika and MERS and all these things, we tend to think, um, and rightly so, that you know we have levels of um, public health and sanitation and disease control that can get ahead of these things quickly and prevent an epidemic in a country turning into a global pandemic. Uh, but there, you know, there's no reason uh, that it doesn't rule out the possibility, I guess is what I should say. Okay. Um, some of the companies involved, you know, you've probably heard of some of these. I'm not recommending any of these companies. I just want to talk about them because they're in the news and show you what happened with the price charts. Um, uh, Inovio uh, had a big bump last week, and this was because a Norwegian not-for-profit uh, let me see if I can find the name because I just wrote the article on this. Do do, do in search of a vaccine. Okay, uh, there's a, a Norwegian uh, coalition called the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations (CEPI), a public-private nonprofit based in Norway. Uh, announced last week it was going to give 11 million in funding to Inovio and Moderna uh, to help develop vaccines against the coronavirus. So this was Inovio last week. Big pop up to six dollars. Uh, big volume, and then back to four again. Um, I saw a, a note from a Jeffries analyst, Moderna is MDR, or M, yeah, MD, RNA, MRNA, that's it. MRNA is Moderna, no D in there. Okay, same thing. Um, I believe this is it, yeah. And Novavax is another one. So Novavax, just wanted to show you these price charts. Not recommending these stocks. I'm not trading them. You know, you got to know something. Here's what one analyst said from Jefferies, um, that it's too late for these companies to, to develop anything. Although there is word today from Australia that, you know, there may, they might make some progress in identifying um, the na narrowing down the genetic structure of the disease. That's one place we have an advantage. Um, for SARS, you know, 15 years ago, we couldn't sequence a genome as affordably and as quickly as we can now. So now they can, you know, get into the DNA and RNA of this virus and possibly come up with a treatment uh, sooner than in times past. All right. Uh, so find my article on Zax.com. It's an article version of my podcast. Uh, the, the Mind Over Money podcast, but the article is going to be called Coronavirus, Epidemic or Pandemic? Cool title, huh? And uh, I'll have those stocks in there. I'll talk about some other cool stuff, like this book, Competition. You know, you know I'm a big fan of The Black Swan by Taleb and how he eviscerated uh, the bell curve and standard deviation as that great intellectual fraud where... You know, Wall Street quants and using modern por portfolio theory thought that they could use uh, historical standard deviation to value the risk of markets and financial products when, uh, you know, Benoit Mandelbrot taught Taleb 
and Jim Case uh, that markets have too much wild randomness. It's not like anything else you can measure standard deviation with. So he also published this in 2007, like Taleb, and takes you know sort of the same attack on the pseudoscience of economics and value at risk models, MPT. Um, at the time, he called competition the birth of a new science. And this is in the, this he, he's an applied mathematician, so he's following on the heels of of uh, the you know chaos science, the sciences of complexity, um, and he you know rightly observes that you know you you have foundational structure in science, physics you know is underneath chemistry, which is underneath biology, but maybe some of the uh, mathematical sciences are underneath physics. Um, the way he talks about it, he also uh, he also quotes Richard fin uh, Feynman, uh, one of my favorite uh, thinker physicists, and uh, he's got a great quote in here. I want to read. Uh, uh, this is from Feynman. This was uh, he was talking to giving the commencement address at Caltech in 1974 to the graduates, and he says, and he's talking about how you do science. After you've not fooled yourself, it's easy not to fool other scientists. But not fooling yourself is far from easy because, liking your own ideas, you are the easiest one to fool. All right, keep that in mind. All right, look for these articles on Zax.com. I'll have all the links, uh, coronavirus. Check out the Mind Over Money podcast. Follow me on Twitter, at Kevin B. Cook. Also follow Jim Bianco. He's, uh, he's, do he's doing more than this. He's updating this stuff constantly. I'll show you. Uh, take a look here. He... Um, yesterday, he also looked at, you know, based on the data he's getting from the China Health Commission of people under quarantine, um, you know, what that indicates for uh, the geometric spread of infection. Uh, I think he also just did something this morning where uh, he writes here, as of January 28th, no, this was last night, uh, the confirmed did not expand as predicted by, uh, by the mathematical model. Uh, China Health might be underreported as some areas are running out of testing kits. Uh, infection cases double every 1.7 days. Uh, and here's, so he's got a lot of data that he's trying to plug into models and project what's possible based on current growth rates. So you want to check him out. All right. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen. Um, stay tuned to CDC for Real updates on the coronavirus. Just don't follow everything you read in the press because uh, you'll get fooled. All right. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen.